All right, let's begin the day with our entire research team joining in this morning to help us with a list of top 10 stocks. And of course, first up, we're going to talk about Grassim and its foray in the paint sector, what this means for the rest of the industry. It's a big one. And Mangalam is right there at the epicenter of all this news flow to tell us what this means. Mangalam, over to you. Now, I'll be watching out for a lot of the paint companies like Asian Paints, Berger, at the same time Kansai, as well as the others, largely because of uh, the big launch that will be announced uh, from the House of Birla's Birla Opus, the paint business. What we know so far is that the overall capacity that they are targeting is close to 1.2, 1.3 million kiloliters eventually, which is similar to what Berger has right now, a little lower than Asian Paints at around 1.85 million itself. What's important to know is the market share target that they have over the next three to five years, the ability for them to take the losses in terms of investments that they're doing in the supply chain, distribution and the marketing itself. And uh, what are their medium term revenue targets? Those are important details that will perhaps be revealed in the press conference and the conversations that we have with the management today. Until then, there would be some nervousness on all the pain stocks. So those will be the ones that I'll be watching out for today. Indeed, Manglam. Thanks a lot for that. Well, let's hop across to Hormuz. He's here to tell us about some defense companies. Morning, Hormuz. Morning, Nigel. And there were some amendments to the FDI policy with this particular reference to the space sector and the defense companies related to that. And the, the union cabinet yesterday has allowed 100% FDI in the space sector. They've broken it down into three sections where there is varying degree of direct FDI post which the FDI for the remaining bit will come via government approval. So the first one is a 74% FDI under the automatic route for satellites for manufacturing and operations, satellite data products and the ground segment and the user segment. That will have a 74% direct FDI and the rest will come via government approval if need be. The second one is 49% FDI under the automatic route for launch vehicles and associated systems or subsystems and the creation of spaceports. And lastly, there is a 100% FDI under the automatic route for manufacturing of components and systems and subsystems for satellites and ground segments and user segments. So it's good news for stocks like a Polo Microsystems, Walchand Nagar, expect them to open in the green today. All right, uh, Hormuz, thanks very much uh, for that. Well, uh, <clears throat> we'll uh, keep an eye out on some of these stocks, actually. Eureka Forbes is uh, the other one. I mean, you know, block after block. Abhishek is here with details. Abhishek. Uh, good morning, Prashant. So, to begin with, uh, sources do tell us that uh, there will be a block in Eureka Forbes. Uh, Lunar Lux will sell about 12% sake. Uh, so, the base issue size is about 957 crore, which can be upside to, uh, upsized to about 1,149 crore. Uh, now, the flow price is at 494.75 per share, which is at a discount of 3% to yesterday's closing price on BSE. AFL uh, Securities is the sole broker and there is a lock-in period of 90 days post this stake sale. Back to you. That. So that's a new rake of Forbes. Abhishek, but you're also tracking South Indian Bank this morning. Uh, well, right issue is the announcement that has come in for South Indian Bank uh, worth about 1,151 crore. The issue price is at rupees 22 per share, which is at a steep discount of 32% to yesterday's closing price. Equity dilution will be about 25% and net worth will increase by 16%. Tier 1 ratio, that's a key important factor to see. That will improve to 16.6% versus 13.4% earlier. However, book value declines sharply by 7.2% to 31.9% per, per share post this uh, you know, right issue taking place. Back to you. Okay, thanks for that, uh, Abhishek. Let's hop across to Vivek. Vivek is uh, tracking some large trades that took place. Vivek, morning. Well, good morning. That's right. So in yesterday's trading session, a couple of large block deals that did happen. Uh, you know, so sources uh, had indicated to us that Yam Brands would be exiting the stake as far as Deviani International is concerned. And along expected lines, Deviani International uh, did see Yam Brands exit its complete 4.4% stake in the company. Clutch of you know domestic mutual funds as well as long only foreign funds have picked up stakes. The government of Singapore's Society General amongst the top buyers. Then you know within the Indian mutual fund industry, uh, Nippon, Sundram, Access Mutual Fund, all of these picked up some amount of stake in yesterday's block deal. The other stock on the radar is Campus Active Wear. So one of the investors, QRG Investment and Holding, sold their entire 1.38% stake. SBI Mutual Fund lapped up the entire stake. Expect both the stocks to be in the green because it's a complete exit from both of the holders uh, in yesterday's block. All right. Uh, thanks very much, Vivek, for that. Home First Finance, we had the management with us uh, yesterday. But there's fresh news flow here. Abhishek, take it away. 
Uh, well, uh, you know, Home First Finance has received approval from IRDAI uh, with respect to soliciting uh, life insurance, health insurance, as well as general insurance. Uh, they will uh, do it as a corporate agent under IRDAI, and this provides an opportunity for them to earn fee income as cross-selling, uh, you know, insurance products uh, to their existing customer base will provide a huge income boost uh, for them in terms of fee income or other income. Back to you. Thanks a lot for that. Well, sugar companies are in focus as the cabinet has approved the FRP. That is, uh, so Vamakshi is joining in to really explain to us what this really means and what is in it for the sugar stocks. Vamakshi, over to you. Well, yes, good morning, Sonia. Uh, the cabinet has gone ahead and hiked the fair and remunerative price, that is the FRP, for sugarcane to 340 rupees per quintal from the existing 315 per quintal. Now, just to give you context, FRP is the minimum price that mills have to pay to sugarcane growers. FRP has been hiked to 340 rupees per quintal and this will be paid at the sugar recovery rate of almost 10.25%. Uh, they've also gone ahead and provided a premium of almost 3.32 rupees per quintal for every 0.1% increase, which essentially means that for each increase of recovery by 0.1%, farmers will get an additional price of 3.32 rupees. Uh, this rise in FRP is for sugar seasons in 2024-25 uh, uh, and this actually starts on October 1st, 2024. They've also gone ahead and fixed the FRP for sugar factories with a recovery of almost 9.5% or less at 315.10 per quintal. Largely, let's also assess the impact uh, that could come through for major sugar companies. Uh, this is sentimentally negative for Balram Purchini, Dwarkesh, uh, as well as Triveni Engineering. And I say sentimentally because this may not affect sugar mills in UP because prices over there are governed by a separate pricing mechanism called SAP. Uh, SAP in UP uh, re very recently was also revised and that has already been factored into the prices of all of these stocks. However, we are expecting slight bit of an impact to come in for EID Parry, which has its mill in some other states. Okay, thanks for that, Vamakshi. Uh, let's go to Sudarshan and wind this down with some more stocks in the news. Sudarshan. Yeah, that's correct. So I have two stocks. First one is NBCC. Company has got in principle approval from Greater Noida Authority to develop five armor Pali projects worth rupees 1,000 crore. Company will develop unused and purchasable FAR apart from existing projects. What is purchasable FAR? That means old allottees can buy over and above the FAR, that is floor area ratio, allowed at the time of actual allotment. Next is Sula Vineyards. Maharashtra government has notified extension of wine industrial promotion scheme for eight years. Remember, last month cabinet had approved the extension for five years now government has approved the extension for eight years so how will this scheme help the company wine companies are normally charged VAT, that is value added tax of 20 percent via this scheme 16 percent will be refunded as rebate all right thanks a lot Sudarshan for that here's a quick recap of our top stocks stocks with positive news flow is Grasim the space sector stocks Apollo microsystems etc are in focus Eureka Forbes South Indian Bank, Devyani International Campus Activewear, Home First Finance, NBCC and Sula Vineyards, while sugar stocks are likely to open in the red. But also